you should not wait that's one thing i would say don't wait okay. for the perfect deal or perfect time because you know the perfect time will never come all you need to do is like take a baby steps right like you know take actions every day whenever you are like you have your resources ready right, you start looking yep. making offers Hey, what's going on, everyone? You got the 7-2 Mindset Investor here with someone I've been wanting to have on the show for quite some time. I've watched his journey. And in actual fact, I'm actually happy we waited this long because just how this individual simply evolved. I mean, this podcast is called the 7-2 Mindset Investor Podcast, The Hero's Journey. The Hero's Journey. And today we have Aditya. And I've watched his journey, you know, and I'm not sure if I like the word hustler because hustler can be seen in so many different ways. But he's someone that's to come here with really the bad hand and how he's been able to turn us around and being one of the top selling real estate agents in Ontario, um, successful, you know, motivating others, leading other immigrants and so forth. So, I mean, just want to welcome my friend Aditya on the show. Welcome, Aditya. Thank you so much, Mark. No problem, man. Good to have you here. I know it's been a long time coming. Um, it's we had a pleasure on- to be here. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay, you know, let's let's just start right to this, man. Like the hero's journey. I mean, you came from a very, you know, I call it a simple upbringing. You know, you came from India. Uh, you talk about how you really had to really figure stuff out very quickly, and I just, you know, your your humility is just. I've never met so someone so humble. Uh, let's 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 talk about your journey, man, and, w- and what you're doing. Yeah, sure. So uh, first of all, like you mentioned, I came from India eight years ago. Um, you know, I, I, I was like, you know, many immigrants came as a student. Uh, my dad is a farmer, so borrowed money to send me here. Mm-hmm. Just uh, on a, you know, belief that North American countries will give a better financial stability because that's one thing we were like struggling from my childhood. Um, my dad, my mom, they worked super hard, but never had financial like you know stability because of that. Like my family was always apart. Like mm-hmm. my dad was in Dubai for years. My mom uh, at my grandmother's home. Um, I'm in a boarding school, so that's like we were always apart just uh, because of financial situation. So I came here as a student after education. I started working uh, mm-hmm. because you know that's the normal route. Like so. It took some time to understand how Canadian market works and get a job. It took right. some time, but once getting into the job, that's when like I realized, oh my god, I cannot really, you know, fulfill my all the dreams that I have, which is like you know I want to have my family with me. I want to travel. I want to go back home. That's one of the biggest thing. I want to go back home very often. You know, stay there at least like three to six months a year, which is like. With this job, it's impossible. And, and the money that, you know, literally took me like two and a half years to pay my debts from my student loan. Sure. So that's when like I started to think more like, oh my God, if, if I continue in this journey, like probably all, all, all I would do is just work and have a house and a car, that nothing else. Like, you know, dreams will be dreams forever. Yes. So that's when like I started to try different things. And thank God, like when I was trying different things, I was into network marketing, Amway, if you know what's it. Oh, is. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Multi-level marketing, absolutely. There's there's a lot yeah. of them out there. Yeah, it, it, it's a blessing. Thank God I went to that uh, an event and I was I became a member and I started to go for monthly members, like, you know, programs, uh, you know, monthly events, they call it. And one day that event changed my life. Like this young kid stands on the... Uh, stage and says talks about a book rich dad put it he says like this book has changed my life and i'm 24 i'm a, like you know millionaire and he's making like you know x amount of money whatever blah 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 all i took was from that uh, event this guy this book has changed his life and i know that book from like 10 years sure. and i never picked it up i never read and that's a moment literally the next the following that was on friday and in the weekend i finished the reading the book Mm-hmm. And that's when, like, oh my God, this is like never my my parents would have taught me this. Sure. So, yeah. so that's when like real estate came in. He talks about real estate, and then you know um, I got into real estate. So, uh, long story short, became an investor, um, bought a bunch of properties, and eventually that like, realized I, I, 
I'm not passionate about my job. So I quit my job two and a half years ago. Um, and now full-time real estate. I have a real estate team now here in Windsor, crushing it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, it's amazing. Like I say this to, I said this before to a number of people is that my student loan outlasted my career. Uh, you know, I, you know, I, going back and thinking about that, but that's okay. But I, you know, and I appreciate you talking about like multi-level marketing. You talk about Amway and that kind of stuff, because, you know, my background is high ticket sales and some of the best high ticket sales education are those multi-level programs, yeah. um, you know, and they really, you know, so I'm happy to hear that that was your first taste of really understanding rich dad, poor dad and, and seeing rent staking you, because for many people, that was really their first taste of really getting a real understanding or what I call the emotional intelligence with respect to real life, real life, you know, cause there's an, you know, what do you want to be? Do you want to be employed? Do you want to be self-employed? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you want to be an investor and really understanding an income versus an expenses, your balance sheet and so many different things. Um, So, you know, I had a previous guest on on the podcast, uh, Peter Oestevez, uh, he's a philanthropist. Uh, he owns, uh, you know, the only private oil refinery in Mexico. Uh, talks, you know, he actually had one of the largest uh, real estate organizations in Texas. Uh, talks about this and really he talks about his upbringing. And so he was an immigrant himself um, and he was so poor, he couldn't afford to dream. Which is very, very powerful. And now he's living his dreams. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when you, when you look back coming from India and coming from a very modest upbringing and so forth, what were some of your dreams then? And are you living your dreams today? I mean, I would say yes, kind of the dreams are always like evolved over the period. Right. So, uh, but definitely some of the dreams that I had, like, you know, uh, little things like I want to spend more time with my parents because I don't know who they are because I never lived with them. That was one right. of the dream. Now I have my, like my mom, mom and dad are right now with me. It's been like more than a year. Amazing. So that's a small dream, but like, you know, probably for other people, it's, it's a, it's, it's might not be a dream, but for me, it's a dream because I never from a kid, like from a child, I never, I was in boarding school. So um, like that, yes. And, and now like last year before COVID, this stupid COVID, kind of, you know, interrupted everything. But I, I went to India, like I, I was there for two months. If it was job, like maybe I don't know if I would have made it, but I have cash flow coming in, I have income sure. coming in. So like didn't think about anything. I was there and really had a very good quality time for the first time ever back home. So for me, that was like kind of a dream coming true. And, and you know, of course the, there are more dreams to achieve, but now I have the confidence that, hey, if I continue to work hard, consistently put in the work that I'm putting in, I can achieve the other dreams that I have, like, you know, bigger dreams as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, I mean, before we start, you know, getting really into the mindset piece, because that is really, that's my passion, um, is mindset. Uh, you know, we talk about this as I'm being, I call myself the mindset investor, the 7-2 mindset investor. Um since, you know, you're the expert in your arena, like what, what's happening, you know, for those investors that could be coming on, what type of signals are you seeing? Are there, are there signals? I mean, is this unicorn still riding at a high or are are we starting to see that this is going to turn into a a, a really small pony? (laughs) Yeah. So again, uh, it's it's a question that I get every day, right? So what's going on in the market, Windsor market, Windsor, Ontario. So uh, first of all, Windsor is still doing pretty strong, um, but definitely uh, because the first month, second month, third month of this year was like very strong. The Mm -hmm. inventory was like very, very low. And now because once the summer started uh, and and this, uh, uh, you know, vaccines, a lot of people got getting their vaccines. So a little bit more things are opening up. People started, you know, get out. Uh, spend some time with family so now the inventory has doubled like so because a little bit more lenient right like so yeah. now they're not as much as they were afraid before sure. um, and also the buyers are less um, because you know it's more summertime um, so definitely under 600 price range we are seeing some uh, discounts comparative to three four months ago 
Mm -hmm. um, but above 600, where the nice family homes, like nice detached homes, those are the ones still like uh, getting into big bidding war. Uh, even in under the under 600 as well, like there is bidding war, but like because the inventory is more, you can get discounts. Like yeah. if you can find a motivated seller, you can find a good property uh, for a discount. Um, how long is going to continue? Uh, I'm pretty optimistic about Windsor market because there are so many things going on like mega hospital that's like, you know, still like haven't started construction. Mm -hmm. um, but once that, you know, construction starts and once that comes into picture, that gonna bring up so much business here. Um, so I feel over the long period, the Windsor market will still continue to do strong. And also like, you know, all this electrical vehicles, the Detroit is again becoming a hub. Um, that's a huge thing because, you know, a lot of Canadians who work in US Sure. Um, on PN visa and all those things. And the bridge construction is still going on. Um, so only thing that is still getting, uh, still under impact is the student um, investor side where, you know, students are still not as much as inflow sure. there was before COVID. So that's still uh, vacancy rate on that side is like, you know, still uh, low, com high competitive to what it was before. Uh, but hopefully once um, all this thing open once the India lift up the ban. I think sure. India or Canada. Canada is not allowing the Indians to come right. directly to because you know that's where some serious uh, COVID issues are going on. So sure. once those are all cleared up, probably I'm very optimistic Windsor will continue to grow. But right. in short term, yeah, you yeah, can get some discounts. Okay, good to know. Good to know. So you know if you have. You know, your background, I mean, yeah, you, you are a successful realtor, but more so you are a successful investor savvy realtor. Yeah. Um, so what, what is some counsel? I don't see advice. Advice is, mm -hmm. advice is something that someone's going to give you if they have no experience. I'm going to call it counsel. What are some key things you would tell a new investor to do first of all, before diving in? So, you know, um, a lot of people like, especially the first step is the toughest thing, right? Like, you know, if you're a brand new person and never bought a property in life, it's going to be very scary. So to get that fear out a little bit, of course, the whole fear will not go away. Um, what I did was like, I learned and I started to network with other investors locally. And I, I, I started working with a local investor focused realtor. My good friend eventually became a partner, Cassidy Lawson. She was like, you know, they were my mentors, like her and her boyfriend, you know, they were investors just like me. Um, I wanted to, you know, do what they are doing. So it was very helpful, like being in that network, um, it, continuously uh, communicating with people who are doing things. Mm -hmm. So literally, like I lift up myself from my regular network and put myself into this new network for investors. So that was the biggest thing that slowly got my fears out. Because now when I'm talking to people who don't own anything, they always talk about like all these market headlines, like, you know, the sure. news headlines. Oh, market is, you know, collapsing. Everything is going to go down or everything is sure. going to go up. Um, those topics, but when you're with the investors, they are oh, just do your numbers, see if the numbers make sense, get the deal. If the numbers doesn't make sense, move yeah. on to the next one. So that there's a big difference, right? So when you are in this network, you, you will be able to easily make decisions that are like educated decisions. So that's what I would suggest. Read, watch podcasts. You know, I I, I till the day like in my car, I don't play music. I just play podcasts on different things so educate yourself yeah absolutely and, and don't be afraid to take that first step you know mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing you're anyways burning your money by renting yep absolutely and you know what's what's key as well is i mean i think a lot of people they just forget an investor you're taking you got to assume risk that's what an investor does it's not like you're gonna buy property and it's gonna go great and it can happen but you can also buy a property, can go south on you. And that's why it's investing is simple. It's a math problem. That's it. So it's, it's think about, you know, if you're doing a math problem, we don't think, oh, what type of paper it is and what the temperature of the room is and this kind of stuff. If the math makes sense, those are the fundamentals. The math doesn't lie. The numbers don't lie. It's, and, you know, sometimes we'll, we'll 
you know, I've seen this before and with many investors, the only, like there's a saying when I used to do medical sales, there's so much research out there that someone will find the research that really fits in their opinion or, or, or what they believe in, right? So in this case, if there's a bad market, someone, but someone really wants to invest in there, they will do everything they can to find research that shows that it's a good market. It's, and they see this time and time and then, and then they shoot themselves in the foot. So it's so important that like, I love what Aditya said is networking. Um, I, you know, I, I'm a firm believer of investing in yourself first. Investing in yourself doesn't mean you invest in yourself, you forget about other people. You need to invest in others. And that's the key thing. You know, I tell investors is don't be a, a dare. And there's a term I came up with, a dare, which is a dumbass real estate investor. <laughs> right? it's, yeah. Don't be a dare. Like focus on the transformational relationships, not the transactional relationships. Don't, don't after this podcast and you see this, don't go and start texting a DTS saying, Hey, I got this deal. Can you analyze it for me? Hey, I've never talked to you before, but I need comps. If Aditya did that for you, I would call Aditya saying, what are you doing? Your time is too valuable. You've invested so much into yourself. So my friends, invest in yourself, invest in your network. It's gonna, it's gonna, you got to pay to play. Think about you want to invest in a property. You got to invest in those relationships too. And if you live in scarcity of thinking you can't invest in relationships, you have no business investing in real estate. Yeah, and that's so powerful. It, it, it's not transactional. It's more like, you know, relational. Uh, honestly, thank God I got that from the beginning. And, and that relations paid off like so immensely. Like, you know, uh, me going from quitting my job at that time, I was like so scared. But one thing that gave me a confidence, like, which is I was already like networking with people, like, you know, really genuinely building relations, not like, you know, hey, uh, can you give me a good deal? Not like you know that, like more like, hey, uh, what do you need help from me? Is there anything I can help you with? Um, kind of more really authentic relations. And like when I was at that point, like, oh my God, like I don't know anyone, but I know this whole network, uh, right. maybe that I can leverage off because I was building the relations. So literally once I got into sales after quitting my job, which was like, you know, highest uh, most income I was making and sure. went to zero. But because I was building these relations that paid off in the first year alone, I, I sold like 55 properties and made over like almost triple four times my income. Sure. That was like big surprise for me. But yeah. when I, you know, look back, what was the real reason? Honestly, biggest reason was I was building relations. Absolutely. And, that, and that's the key thing. Like, you know, I'm, um, you know, I'm blessed with the, the rooms I'm in and, and the people I speak with, you know, and I've, I've spoken to so many successful individuals, um, either through the podcast or networking or many of the masterminds I'm part of, the most successful individuals in the world is, are the ones that give the most. They're the ones that are willing to give back the most. Um, and the ones, you know, I think a lot of people are out there just for the take, the take, the take. The successful ones are all about the give, the give, the give. They don't wake up in a day and saying, what can I take from today? It's what can I give to today? And that's what fulfillment is. Fulfillment isn't what you take. It's what you give. And, you know, when I look at the things that you've done and, you know, you've gone the way and how you guys were doing, I think it was the Win City stuff. You guys were doing other stuff. That takes time out of your day. That takes time out of your weekends. And as a, as a realtor, your weekends are your busiest time and you take that out so you can do these networking events. Um, and, that, and that's, what's really powerful. So, um, you know, typically what I do is I would ask a question, which is, okay, what are some tips you would give um, investors that want to get in real estate investing? I'm not going to do that because I know most aren't going to listen. So, <laughs> cause they're going to do their own thing. So the question I'm going to ask you now are what are, are five things an investor should not do? when they want to get into real estate investing? That's a tough question. I <laughs> should not do. Um, you know, you should not wait. That's one thing I would say. Um, okay. Don't wait okay. for the perfect uh, deal or perfect time. Okay. Because, you know, the perfect time will never come. Yeah. Um, all you need to do is like take a baby steps, right? Like, you know, take actions every day. Um, look at, analyze. So don't wait. Just... Um, 
whenever you're like you have your resources ready, you start looking, yep. making offers. Um, that's number one. Second thing is like you know build those relation uh, right. relationships. Don't don't be transactional. It's a tough question. I have to come up with three sure. more now. Uh, what else can I think? Um, Honestly, I cannot think of more. Okay, well, 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 that's fine. <laughs> that's and, and, and I did put you on the spot, so don't feel bad. Yeah. Because I mean, and I, I have a tendency of asking unorthodox questions. So yeah. this is what my purpose is as a pod you know, show. A along the way, if I come across some new one, Absolutely. my brain is trying to pick up those ones. Uh, I, I cannot think of what okay, not so to do. Let's, let's say we talked about the first one, speed. So mm-hmm. don't wait, right? Yeah. So don't wait. Get in the game. Yeah. But I think a lot of people get stuck in, there's a term called analysis paralysis. paralysis yeah. I call it information constipation. Yeah. <laughs> it's, they take it so much and then they can't, <laughs> they can't execute or yeah. excrete. Okay. Uh, two is, is a don't, is don't make it transactional, make it transformational yeah. or relation. Number three is for me is, uh, it, which is big for me and I would actually move this to the top, which is invest in yourself, invest in your education is don't go buy something and don't follow the masses. You need to first take a step back and and invest in yourself. But before you do that, understand why you want to get into real estate investing, not because everybody else is doing it. Yeah. Don't buy without any purpose. Don't buy just because everyone is buying. Absolutely. I think the fourth for me of a don't for uh, new real estate investors is don't get into real estate investing if you don't have an exit strategy. Hmm. Good one. Exit strategy. Because I think a lot of, it's like, uh, you know, they, got, they get in and all we all one might be thinking about is, oh, I'm going in for the cash flow. Okay, great. But what happens if that property now has an issue that you have to re- replace that septic tank that's going to cost you $35,000? Now there's no cash flow happening for the next year and a half, two years. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Right? Um, I think a, a fifth one for me would be is not understanding the fundamentals of real estate investing is don't get into real estate investing if you don't know the difference between active income and passive income and really understanding what the key differences are and how they impact what your goals are want to be in real estate investing. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. So is that, uh, do you have any, do you have any, more, any others that we can think about? Don't do, don't piss off Aditya. That's another <laughs> one. Don't yeah, piss the, off your power team. <laughs> yeah. The, you know, don't, don't uh, uh, send uh, DMs for people that saying, Hey, do this for me rather like, Hey, um, how, how can I help you? Sure. So, so that you can get into the network. You know, if, if you want to be friends, become friends with, you know, Mark or Aditya or someone else who can help you, the journey you cannot uh piss them off with random text see how you can add value to that person absolutely absolutely and and those are the don'ts um and and that's the thing you know another one i'll say which is a don't is don't live in scarcity don't live in scarcity you know when one lives in scarcity you may think coming into this i'm not going to tell someone i'm looking at this real estate deal because they're going to take it away from me that's scarcity that's living too small. Yeah. I, I, and there's a lot of that. And there's a lot of people, and I'm, I'm looking right at you right now, that claim you live in abundance. No, you don't. You're so scarce. It's not even funny. Not because you read a book. Action. Action. Abundance is, is, is like this, is which is sharing knowledge with others so they don't make the same mistakes. Yeah, that, that's, that's a great point. Um get out with the, you know, go do something with the information you have. Don't just, uh, you know, keep learning, learning, learning until you, you really want to get this perfect. And by the time the strategy has moved on or the market has shifted. So. Absolutely. So I'm going to, I'm going to throw some lots of different questions your way today. Okay, because, sure. <laughs> okay. um, and usually, you know, a lot of my podcasts are really surrounded mindset and I've made a little pivot here. Um, which is related to mindset because I want us to stretch our minds here. So if I am a new immigrant that's moved to the country Mm -hmm. and I say, I want to do real estate investing, can it be done? Yes, 100%. Okay, fantastic. So how does a new immigrant moving to the country get into real estate investing? So first of all, 
if you're like totally new, you need to know what's going on in here. Like you need to know what, what are available right there. So the best place to start with, maybe, you know, get it, doing some, you know, door knocking and those wholesaling, because that's the one does not need money, does not need credit, like, and, and, and does not need to have any experience. All you need to know, go do some Google search, read about what's wholesaling, how, how can you do it? Maybe if needed, go take a program that probably there are so many gurus, smart people who have like, you know, $100, $200, less than $1,000, you get a nice program. So I'm pretty sure you can invest that $1,000 um, and, and learn about it. Now go do it what you learn. So that's the easiest way to get in. And if, if you're an immigrant here and, and, and you have a job, you are on PR, and there is a fantastic program that you know Canada offers is you can buy a home, primary home for 5% down. If you have a job, you will qualify for 5% down, which means like if you're buying a house for 400,000, you need 20,000. So if you're working at some job and, and, and to get this 20,000, maybe it's not that hard, as much as hard you think. Yeah. All you need to do is maybe work some extra shifts for one year, one and a half year, eliminate all unnecessary expenses, live within your means. So that could be this another step that you can take. Mm -hmm. Or maybe go do get into sales, something related to real estate so that you can learn. Or go work for someone who is in the real estate, maybe do a part-time job for them, work in the weekends for a contractor or for an agent. Um, has an assistant or you know if, if you have some specific skills like if you are good at videos or you know Mark definitely loves someone to help him with the you know social media stuff if you have that skills if you want to learn from Mark maybe help him mm -hmm. so there are hundred ways I can think of mm -hmm. so that's the key is because I think what we do is a lot of times and we're guilty of this ourselves sometimes we, we focus you know one of my one of my greatest books for business it's who not how by Benjamin Hardy a lot of people focus on how am I going to do this? How do I do this? And so what they'll do is they'll go on YouTube and they'll all this time focus on the who. Yeah. Focus on the who. Hey, Aditya, you're, you're, you're an investor. You're a realtor. How can I help you? How can I help you? Okay. Well, here we go. I'm looking. I want to get my hands on some more buildings. Okay. This is what we're going to do. Can you do this? I need you to go look for this person. Start serving. And it's, it just comes from there and how many people do we speak to that's where they came from it was yeah. working and being mentored in that environment which is critical so i tell people all the time is like if you're new to the country there's still ways if you have been dealt a bad hand and you lost your job there's still ways but it won't happen if you're sitting on the couch asking yourself how am i going to do this the question is is who do i need to connect with to make this happen join different groups. I mean, you know, uh, I'm part of so many different, uh, different uh, real estate education groups. Uh, give one as an example, Cashflow Tribe. They offer yep. a webinar once a month. Once a yep. month, it's a major webinar. It's a workshop that they do. Mm -hmm. And these are the type of things they're saying is how to get in real estate with none of your own money. Invest yep. in yourself, my friends. And don't be afraid to, you know, invest for that purpose right like so that's where i see like especially new people to the country like you know scared of oh maybe these people are trying to scam me for that thousand dollar course or you know trust me they're not going to build a mansion with thousand dollars but for you possibly it can build your mansion if sure. you take that education so uh, and i have to give you a solid credit on that who not how you you posted that book and I think the next week I picked up that book and I, I, I made so many changes in my business. It's, it's oh, that's you know, powerful. It's powerful. And it's like, you know, they say, okay, so, you know, and I think a lot of times someone will say, well, who do I connect with now? Okay. Well, then that scarcity mind kicks in saying, well, I don't, I don't want to pay someone for that. Well then go back to the how. Yeah. It's, it's, this is all mindset, my friends. And, and this is one of the biggest things I tell people, if you want to be successful in real estate investing, it's not about how much money you have. It's not about how many connections you have. It's not that you're, you're related to the CEO of whatever bank. It's your mindset. It's your mindset. And 
if you're not in willing to invest in your mindset, no one's going to invest in you. And that's what it comes down to, because you're going to be faced with more challenges than you've ever faced before in your life when you get into real estate investing. I can tell you that right now. I've seen bigger Very problems powerful. than I could ever imagine. But if I didn't focus on the mindset piece and the stamina piece, oh God, I, I, I would not be doing real estate investing anymore. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you a thousand percent. That's one thing I feel like differentiates me from you know people who are like you know new to country, like um, majority of them is like, you know, hey, I was able to do all these things just because I was from the beginning, I was investing in myself. Uh, since I read that rich dad food that I read like you Absolutely. know more that love it. It's you you gotta you gotta build that um, you know the personal development has to happen Absolutely. to see the results. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um so the next question I want to ask you then is for you, like I mean um, with, you I mean, your mindset piece, what are some of the things that you do to keep, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? So how do you, what, what type of things are you continuing to do for your mindset to be a successful investor savvy realtor? Yeah, again, you know, so um, I touched on that, like previously, um, mostly reading and networking, because those are two key things that I continuously do, because, you know, every day, even, you know, not all days are super wonderful, right? Like, right. Um, we think that successful people have like, you know, beautiful life, but you know, everyone is, does go through that cycle. It's like a roller coaster, right? Sure. You will have a beautiful days and you will have rough days. And if you want to scale, sail through that rough days, you need to have something to fall back on. So for me is that networking and, and, and books. And, and podcasts, that, that's a big yes. thing. I, I, audio like always goes on, on, on my, in my car. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, and I think that's critical, right? I mean, it's all about environment, my friends. Um, and if you haven't heard my, any of my podcasts before, shame on you. <laughs> or, but um, it's all about environment. Environment is the quickest thing that we have. We can change. We can change environment, the type of books we read. Maybe you don't read books, start reading books. Yeah. Um, in the car. I mean, I, I said this on a podcast recently, which is, uh, you know, uh, I make fun of their names because I think they're just ridiculous. Uh, bum smoke and juice box, I call them. I mean, I don't even know if they're even alive, uh, but I know many children listen to this type of music and half of these people are dead. They either got shot in their head or made it to prison, died in prison, or they tried to swallow drugs and, and now like they died. Yet, we can control that penetration or that inception and so forth. So we could be changing our environment with just the things that we listen to could be an audible, could be a type of book, could be a podcast, the level of conversations that you have with people, you know, there's a saying, right? Like how, you know, how poor people talk about uh, other people or right? something like that yeah. or problems and this kind of stuff. And the, the wealthiest, they talk about ideas. Yeah. That, that's a that's a big difference I have to make right like so from going from this literally kind of lower middle class family where all I was hearing when I was in you know friend circle or family all I hear is like talking about different people or you know um, talking about what's wrong in the society that mm -hmm. was the majority of the topics and I saw a big difference when networking with people who are really like doing some shit, getting things done and growing yep. for with them. It's totally different. You, you, they always talk about, Oh, where do I, where am I traveling to next? Uh, or, you know, what, what, what I'm, what are exciting things I'm doing all this? Like, so it, it sounds very simple, but like plucking yourself out from that bad network and putting yourself in this, you know, the, the growth mindset, that's huge. Yep. Absolutely. And just doing that yourself, it's, that's the investment. And my friends, the, in order to become selfless, it's time to become selfish. Love that. Right. Uh, so um, I know you're in the apartment space mm -hmm. and that's fantastic. I've seen the posts and it was uh, very touching, very, very touching on one of the posts you put on, I believe it was Instagram to have, I believe it was your mother there and showing her the apartment. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's talk about that. How was that for you showing your, your mother, like, you know, especially with your modest upbringing and all of a sudden 
you see you, you see this like what's going through your mind i mean so definitely they're super proud of it right like so because uh, we always saw in our whole journey so far was just financial debt and all of a sudden like you know just this two years is a huge shift sure. in our whole family life right yeah. so yeah. now like literally my, my mom and dad they can go back if they want to they can come back whenever they want to um, because you don't know we don't have to worry about those little expenses um, and then when she went through that building like she 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 felt so happy that's when i took that picture i'm like let's take a picture um but you know it's 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 very um very interesting to for myself to see that like i didn't imagine that i can get that building in this less span i only started like four years ago less than four years ago investing and and buying that building is, is a huge step for me yeah but, um you know when you're in that right mindset right automatically when the opportunity is present yeah and you you will be able to recognize those opportunities sure absolutely so that's what happened like for me that deal was like just it 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 was meant for me i guess uh, my client supposed to buy that and he said like at the last minute no man i i, I i'm not uh, at this point I, i'm moving on to something else for now I, i don't want it i'm like my brain started to think i don't have money but i love to buy this one sure. I, i literally bought that property with another partner and myself my money that i saved for my 2021 taxes of my realtor income and sure. hst so yeah. that money i used to, to purchase that's so, amazing well that good for you man that that's phenomenal um that is phenomenal um what's next for you what's next so that's a that's a million dollar question um but what i'm working on right now is to build a solid team here in windsor okay. a, a real estate team where you know um we can crush uh, with the sales um and biggest thing for me is just like you providing value and Uh, inspiring people so that's the reason i do a lot of youtube content that's my really uh, passion i would say mm-hmm. so um i'll be continue to do the content a lot and have the team take care of the sales mm-hmm. um, and continues to train them and help them um, achieve their goals um and and, and from next year i want to hopefully this all the travel things open up uh, i want to travel back like you know two to three months back home and nine months crush it here continue right. to do this so as of now that's that's a goal um yeah that's that's pretty much it yeah no i just i just love how just the simplicity just your simplicity i i just love it um as we come to a close here um what's the best way for um for the listeners the viewers to to reach out to you facebook youtube instagram everything with aditya kumar so on there we go you know uh so if you're looking for anybody who's looking for information on introductions with respect to real estate how to get in the game um i believe you've even done videos in uh in your in your mother language mother tongue yeah. and that kind of stuff yeah. which is just brilliant so you know my friends there's so much material out there you just have to go and find it and you know someone like dt has taken time out of his day to create that but it's meaningless if you're not taking the action yeah and and so for those of you i highly recommend we'll put it into the show notes of how to find the dt's youtube channel and i urge all of you not to just watch but also comment reach out and i want you guys to tell dt your what you took from it and what are you going to do about it Yeah and love to see if you have taken you know if that content helped you to take a first step if you bought your first property let us know in the comment you know that love to see the success that helps us it's fulfilling absolutely and, that, and that's what it comes down to passion is passion you know we can be passionate about different things but it's until we get that level of fulfillment that keeps that motivation that drive and that fuel of passion to keep on going and this is why we do what we do um This is why we do what we do. This is why we're taking time out of our day to create content for you. Um so my friend Aditya, thank you so much for doing this. 
Uh, and I can't wait till when this airs and, uh, you know, just keep on doing what you're doing. You're truly an inspiration. Thank you so much, Mark. Uh, it's, it's pleasure having you, being here. You know, it's, 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 you put me on the spot for those interesting questions. <laughs> <laughs> now maybe I'll make it content on that topic. Yeah, that's great. You know, and I think that's very important because, um, you know, I've been blessed and uh, that many of my guests, if not all my guests, um, so I've had billionaires on my show, uh, multimillionaires, I've had mindset experts. And it's amazing the comments that come afterwards saying, wow, I mean, the level of questions and the type of questions you asked were very unorthodox. And, uh, and it's important because if I want all my guests to get out of their comfort zone, because when they get out of their comfort zone, it forces them to grow. And I know they all appreciate it after. Yeah. That literally made me thinking even till now, I'm still thinking about what, what can I, <laughs> so. <laughs> well, I'm so happy, man. And, uh, like I said, my friends, I want you to all give my friend a follow and, uh, this has been very inspiring. So thanks again. Thank you. Take care all.